Here I'm going to show you how to calculate compound interest in order to get the total dollar value amount after so many years of say an investment or an amount of money that you put into the bank. But here I'm going to show you how to do it with one formula that you're going to create in Excel. Previously in the Finance Basics 2 tutorial I showed you how to do this by hand right here as well as using this formula right over here. Now you can do that if you'd like, but if you're working in Excel, there's no point to waste all of that time. So what I've got here is a principal of $100. Let's say we're putting it into a bank, an interest amount of 5%, and we've got three years. Those are going to be our periods. So we're going to have three periods, each period counting as one year, we're going to invest it at the beginning of year one. We want to find out the amount at the end of year three. The formula that I created for it is equals FV underscore compound interest. No need to type it simply hit tab. Now let's go ahead and first select the principal amount, comma. Now let's go ahead and select the interest amount, comma. And now let's go ahead and input the number of periods. If I had a cell right here that said period or number of years, I could simply click cell B3. But I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and hard code this in. Not the best practice, but change it on your sheet if you'd like. So I'm going to hit 3. Close parentheses, enter, check it out. We used an Excel function right here to do this, which is we would have had to remember the mathematical function. So say two years down the road you don't remember this exact function, that's okay because you've got the Excel function. Now let's go ahead and create this Excel function now that you know what it's going to do. So all you have to do here is hit Alt F11 on the keyboard. Let me write that out real quick. So there's the shortcut, Alt F11. It's going to take us to the VBA window. When you're there, select the workbook that you'd like to put this function in. Now, the way I'm doing it, it's only going to work in one workbook at a time. Go up to the Insert menu, select Module. Something like this will open up. And now we can go ahead and enter our function. Now I'm going to go ahead and simply paste it in because honestly it's a waste of time to type this. It is a very simple thing and you can see this is the name of the function right here FV compound interest and you want to make sure that that is exactly the same as this because you can rename it to anything you want and changing this name here is going to change what you type in Excel when you type the equals sign. So you go equals whatever you want. It could just be compound interest, but here equals, I start typing FV and this will fill in. Sounds complicated, but basically this is the name of the function. So make sure you change it to whatever works for you. This is the actual stuff right here. The compound interest formula, present value times one plus the interest rate raised to the number of periods. And that's all you need. Now, um, if you want to just copy this, what you can do is go to teachexcel.com and you can um, get the workbook for this tutorial there and just copy and paste it in. Hit Alt F11. Now we're back here and we're ready to use this function whenever we need to. As soon as I start typing FV, then underscore, we get FV compound interest. The one thing is, you'll notice you have to remember the order of all of the arguments here. So that is important to remember. For this case, the first thing is the principal, then the interest, then the number of periods, just like the formula over here. First thing, principal, interest, number of periods. So that's how you can create a user-defined function, that's what it's called, in Excel in order to very easily and quickly calculate the uh, future value using compounding interest.